Remember a couple weeks ago when I told you about a foreign funded expedition by American biologist Alexandra Morton, supported by American activists at the Sea Shepherd Society to investigate the BC salmon farming industry in the name of research? Well, it turns out Ms. Morton and her group are engaging in more activism rather than research. I just got back from a trip up to the northern part of Vancouver Island in Camel River, BC, where I went to a salmon farm operated by Marine Harvest Canada. I had never been to a salmon farm, so I had no idea what to expect. But sure, I had heard the claims from people like David Suzuki. It makes no sense to grow animals in open nets for you use the ocean as a shithouse. But I found nothing close to the disinformation being spread by him and others like Alexandra Morton and their celebrity endorser Pamela Anderson. The farm was clean, and the only smell was that of the salty seawater surrounding us. My guides were Ian Roberts of Marine Harvest Canada and Harold Seward, a hereditary clan chief of the Wubunjusum clan of the Kikwasutniak First Nations. Harold and his clan have spent their lives on the water. And during our trip to the farm, he was able to tell us about the tides and the weather patterns of the day. All knowledge he knows from personal experience or the, from the generations of knowledge passed down by his people. That is why it is just so offensive that Alexandra Morton and the Sea Shepherd Society would conduct a trip claiming they have the vast support of First Nations. Especially when we know that this is an industry that many First Nation bands and people embrace as a great employment opportunity in an area of the province now without much else since the downturn in forestry and the closure of a pulp mill back in 2008. Miss Morton and her team had visited the salmon farm I was at just two days prior and I can tell you that from the observations of the people working on the farm and people like Harold, who have spent years doing work with the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, that Morton and co. are simply not doing actual research, but instead are engaging in activism. Lots of signs, banners, and even a flying drone over the heads of people just trying to do their jobs. Oh, plenty of pictures were taken with a telephoto lens. But many of the pictures Ms. Morton published on her blog actually appear to show more of an interest in taking photos of the employees in their private living quarters rather than the fish. And then going on to make claims that the employees must have something to hide. You know, this did not sit well with site manager John Eilert. It's frustrating for us because they're, they're not here doing research. It's more uh, harassment tactics. Uh, so we've seen very, very little research on there and it's just a lot of uh, boating around taking pictures. Uh, what really frustrates me the most is the, the stuff they're posting and our families are reading this online, our families are, are following this too and that really upsets me when my wife calls me at night crying because she's scared that these people are going to uh, affect our livelihood. So people say that we're hiding, uh, we're all in secretive. Uh, we have multiple tours running all through the summer months. Uh, just this year alone uh, I've hosted over 400 people. They've all come through and spent an afternoon with me on the site. John also showed me that the guys on site who operate the farms have to have a number of skills. From monitoring the fish via HD cameras, to needing to do lab work. We have the dome camera that overlooks the whole site, gives us the access to see the surrounding area, see the surface of the pen, see the fish behavior. Uh, then inside every single pen uh, we have a high definition camera gives us the ability to scan around, look at the fish, look how they're feeding. Uh, a lot of time is spent in here just analyzing the water. We're raising a product in the ocean, so we need the ocean to be the, as best and pristine as it can be. Time was tight and we had to head back to shore. But there I was able to chat with Harold a bit more in depth. I began by asking him if he has seen any of the negative impacts from salmon farming on wild salmon. I haven't seen any negative impact from the fish farms. We've had runs like the biggest run ever recorded in, in, in the history of commercial fishing on this coast was 2010. And uh, that happened like six years ago today. And, and uh, that happened while the fish farms were here for what, 20 years or so. My other guide, Ian Roberts, is the public affairs director for Marine Harvest Canada. We talked about a few things but I began with questions many salmon farm skeptics regularly raise. Why we used Atlantic salmon in the Pacific Ocean, and what, if any, additive is in the feed for the fish. And then we switched gears into the kind of job opportunities salmon farming can provide. 
And the reason why you want to farm an Atlantic salmon is because it, uh, it is a very flavorful fish, it's popular worldwide, and it actually is in a different market than most Pacific salmon, so you're not competing in the same market. From a farmer's perspective, it's one of the most efficient animals you can raise. It converts feed very efficiently, almost one to one. One pound in gets you one pound of salmon out um, because it's a very docile fish. So it's, it's the best fish to farm in our opinion and has a history here in British Columbia of not colonizing and certainly not reproducing. So it's also a very safe fish to farm as well. I can liken this to the flamingo. The flamingo wouldn't be pink unless it ate krill. Uh, krill have a carotenoid uh, that naturally turns the feathers from white to pink and salmon are no different. And it doesn't matter whether it's a wild salmon or a farm salmon, in the food they eat is a carotenoid, typically called astaxanthin. It's actually sold in our health food stores as a uh, popular antioxidant for humans. Uh, but fish also need it to grow healthy as well. So we include that carotenoid in their diet and when they eat they turn that natural pink red color. Uh, it's a natural process. It doesn't matter whether you're a wild or a farm-raised salmon. Yeah, the, uh, the business here on the North Island, our company is the largest private employer on the North Island, employing over 530 people. Good paying jobs, young families that are affording houses. So what it's really done is uh, provide people, young families, uh, an opportunity to live in the beautiful end of uh, Vancouver Island. While there is a lot of skepticism from the industry side and people like Harold as to the quality and effectiveness of the research and sampling done by Ms. Morton, I sent a few of the pictures of the techniques and methods they were using for their research to a third-party testing company and spoke with biologist Lance Stewartson from Mainstream Biological Consulting about what would be the usual methods and techniques used and seen during a typical research trip. When you're selectively taking samples, the ability to make conclusions on the population of a whole uh, is extremely limited because you, you're not taking a random sample of the population, so you're taking selected individuals. So you can make comments about what that specific sample has, but you, it's hard to extrapolate those to the population as a whole. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So typic, typically, when we sample juvenile salmon, it's done with a with a net, yeah, uh, like a like a, a beach seine net or 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 a, or a juvenile sized purse seine net, um, and then uh, the fish are held in the brunt of the net and allowed to swim freely, and then you it, then you collect individual samples out of that bunt. So now you've heard from the salmon farming industry and an independent biologist as a response and a juxtaposition to the narrative being pushed by Ms. Morton and Sea Shepherd. I find it so frustrating when I hear what the techniques for testing should be and then see evidence that Sea Shepherd and Ms. Morton are simply taking shortcuts or basically just trying to find samples that prove their preconceived bias. But you know, there's one more piece to this puzzle and that's local First Nation bands whose members benefit from this industry. I was able to meet with Chief John Smith of the Slolowitz First Nations. The whole idea of being invaded by, by these people, they have no permission to come into our territory and to deal with our private, private uh, properties. Uh, those, that's a, uh, we have a, a partnership with Greek Seafoods and, and uh, it's a, an important economic driver for us at this point in time because we have nothing else. Dishonesty that's involved. They won't. They won't phone me. They, everybody knows how to get in touch with me when they need to, and they don't do that. They've never done it. And Alexander Morton should just tell the truth, not half truths, because that's what she uses, and she easily bamboozles people because she's good at it, and she can stay the hell out of our territory. So there you have it from the chief himself. Alexander Morton and the Sea Shepherd are not welcome in the Slow Louise territory. Yet Ms. Morton accuses them of being afraid and having something to hide. But did we not just hear the chief tell us that she has never even picked up the phone or called him or even looked at him at a press conference? What a coward. You know, if you live here in BC and you're like me, you probably are more likely to buy wild salmon at the market. And that's fine, I love sockeye myself. But the facts are clear. Salmon farming is a great way to supplement wild stocks. But more so, they provide high paying long term employment in a region where not much else is happening. And for the First Nations members involved like Harold, 
They care so deeply about the environment, and if they thought for one second that salmon farming was having a negative impact on their communities and the wild salmon the past 25 years, well, they would simply not be on board. For the Rebel.media, I'm Christopher Wilson. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.